Now we'll talk about psychiatric disorders in pregnancy. So there are three psychiatric disorders that we see in pregnancy, postpartum blues, postpartum depression, and postpartum psychosis. Let's take the time to explore each of these. So postpartum blues, it occurs in about 50 to 80% of pregnancies, so it's very common. The symptoms are guilt, crying, feeling overwhelmed, and the onset is usually anywhere between birth to two weeks after delivery. The treatment, spontaneous. It resolves on its own, so you just reassure mom if she has these symptoms. Next is postpartum depression. Now, there are risk factors for postpartum depression. You need to be aware of these so that when you see your patients during pregnancy, you also make them aware that if these symptoms start to happen associated with postpartum depression, they should seek your care. So if a patient has a history of postpartum depression or depression in general, they're at increased risk for developing postpartum depression. If they have poor social support, if their baby has health problems, or if there's another baby that they're taking care of, another child they're taking care of that has health problems, they are at increased risk for developing postpartum depression. If they have difficulty with breastfeeding, if we remember from the breastfeeding lecture, breastfeeding is one of the things that protects us against postpartum depression. So if there's difficulty with breastfeeding, this can be a risk factor. And also for families or moms that have financial difficulties, they're at increased risk for developing postpartum depression as well. So with postpartum depression, it occurs in approximately 15 to 25% of pregnancies. Now that rate may actually be a bit higher because sometimes we're not so great at diagnosing it. Speaking of diagnosis, there is a way to diagnose postpartum depression. It is called the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale. This scale is administered to up to, from two weeks up to a year after delivery. It is a self-administered questionnaire where patients are able to assess how well they are coping with their new state of being a mom. It's very good at determining who has postpartum depression. So what are the symptoms? Inability to cope, if they have disinterest in themselves, disinterest in their child, disinterest in their normal activities, that patient may have postpartum depression. Onset of symptoms can be anywhere from two weeks up to a year after the birth of their child. The treatment is psychotherapy and SSRIs. So the literature shows that doing psychotherapy works well, doing medication works well, but the two working together works the best. Now, postpartum psychosis. This is very rare. We see this in less than 1% of pregnancies. Symptoms are the same as typical psychosis, meaning patients may experience visual or auditory hallucinations. The onset of symptoms can be anywhere from two weeks up to a year after delivery. Now the treatment for psychosis, because it is a more severe form of a psychiatric disorder, are to start antipsychotics under the care of psychiatrists. This is not typically a diagnosis that obstetricians will take care of. Now, let's review that again. Epidemiology for postpartum blues, 50 to 80% of pregnancies, symptoms, guilt, crying, being overwhelmed, onset two weeks, and it resolves spontaneously. Postpartum depression, 15 to 25% of pregnancies, symptoms being inability to cope, disinterest in self or child, onset being two weeks up to a year after delivery, treatment, psychotherapy, and SSRIs. Postpartum psychosis occurs in less than 1% of pregnancies, symptoms are visual and auditory hallucinations, onset of symptoms, two weeks up to a year after delivery, and treatment antipsychotics under the care of psychiatrists. Of note, in any of these situations, if a patient is complaining of homicidal or suicidal ideation, that patient needs to be referred to the emergency room for immediate hospitalization. So let's take a case. This is a 19-year-old Gravita 1, Para 1 female that presents to your office two weeks after an emergency C-section for evaluation of her incision. You notice that she appears unkempt and sees, seems disinterested in her infant. Upon further questioning, she reports separating from her partner and has poor family support. 
She reports crying all the time and she is having difficulty coping. The next best step in managing this patient is A, reassurance, B, begin a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or an SSRI, C, hospitalization under the care of a psychiatrist, D, reevaluate symptoms in two weeks to determine if they have resolved. What do you think the answer is? The answer is B. We want to begin a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Let's break down this question. Now, she's presenting two weeks after her C-section, okay? So that lets us think that now the symptoms are starting two weeks after delivery. She seems unkempt and disinterested in her child, which means she's also disinterested in herself. And she has separated from her partner and has poor family support. She's crying all the time and having difficulty coping. These are all symptoms and all risk factors for postpartum depression. So A is incorrect. Reassurance is only used for postpartum blues. C is incorrect because we use this if suicidal ideation, homicidal ideation is present, or psychosis. And D, yes, we may want to reevaluate the symptoms in two weeks, but the patient needs therapy now. So the answer is B, start a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor.